Hello, hello, hello. And today I'm going to show you some math that's going to change everything. What do I mean by that? Well, I've done the hundreds of videos deep diving into the deadly statistics of Yu-Gi-Oh and the fun stuff that we can do. But today there's a question that everyone's been asking me and that they've been having trouble understanding. And that's why is it so deadly to run all of these play sets? I've always said that you shouldn't run more than seven play sets because of the math. And today I'm finally going to show it to you and why we shouldn't run more than seven play sets. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, if it's your first time tuning into the channel, a play set is just when you're running three copies of a card. It's deadly because what happens is you're turning your five card hand basically into a four card hand if you draw a duplicate. So here's the math for that. And we're going to go easy. It's not going to be hard. I'm going to explain it nice and slow. I'm going to be using a 42 sized deck, right? with 14 play sets. I'm gonna show an extreme example. All of them are play sets. 14 times three is 42. That's why I'm doing that. And you'll see and understand why I'm doing that later because when I use this extreme example, it's gonna make the math easier for us in the long run when I keep, when I dive a little deeper. And also, by the way, this isn't too far-fetched at all. I've seen decks where the whole thing is just play sets. Anyways, and they're all gonna be hard once per turn effects. That means you could only use X card once per turn, right? Because if it's not a hard once per turn effect, then it's not really subject to my playset rule because you could run as many copies as you want and have no fear of whether or not you draw a duplicate. This is just only if you draw a card to psych, you can't use X card per turn, but let's jump right in, right? So jumping right in, we're going to take it card by card. I'm not going to throw all five cards at you and give you the math right away. That's going to maybe overwhelm you. It's going to be so simple. A kindergartner will be able to understand this. So don't worry. So the first card, right? It could be any of our cards here. Remember, I have cards A through N. They all have the same percentage chance to be drawn because they're all from they're all three play sets. So just to make math simple, I'm not going to show you. We're just going to draw card A, right? Card one of five is card A. Don't even need them to show you math on that, right? Because it could have been any card. Card A. It's when we get down to this second card that things are going to get a little bit, not problematic, but it's going to be a little bit more deep. Card two of five math. So here we go. We have card A, right? No need to panic. Don't worry. These, these percentages are nothing. Don't be afraid. We know that there are two other A's left in the deck. That's why for our dupe percentage here, it's a two out of 41% chance. We said, Jesse, there's 42 cards in the deck. Well, remember we drew card A, that leaves 41 cards left in the deck. Two of them are deadly. So when we draw our second card, whatever it could be, right? What could it be? We know that it's, it's about a 5% chance to be A. And it's a 95% chance to be cards B through N, right? So let's jump to the second card. We have card A and oh, we got lucky. It's card B, right? Well, we had a 95% chance. We weren't really that lucky. So now let's do card three math, right? So now card three math, there is our, this is our safe percent chance, 36 out of 40. Remember we drew one more card. That's why it went down from 41 to 40. And there's now 36 chances to be safe because remember the two deadly ones are, there's still two A's in the deck. Now we don't want to draw. And now there's two B's we don't want to draw. So a four out of 40% chance to draw a dupe, 10%. Nice, easy math, by the way. That's why I remember I chose these numbers for nice, easy math for us all to understand. 10% chance. Remember, before it was five, 10. But now here's the thing. Even though it's a 10% chance, we also had to get to this point. Remember, we had to dodge the first one. And we had to dodge now this 90%. So all in all, our luck factor up to this point, I'm just gonna call it luck factor, is 85%. And you can see how, remember, it was 5% at first and 85.6% now. So you can already see how it's starting to exponentially increase just off of drawing two duplicates for our first two cards. And remember, it was like four point something. And now it is 10. So even this, the dupe percentage itself is starting to slightly exponentially increase. Interesting, interesting. Let's go to the next card, right? Ooh, good. We got lucky again. We had 85% chance. It's card C. We got nice and lucky. Good, right? So card four of five math, right? 
33 out of 39% chance to be safe. Remember, one less, and we have two, four, six cards that are deadly, right? So it's a, maybe using a bit e easier to show you the two percentage. Six of them are deadly. We don't want to draw for our, the card four. We don't want to draw the two C's that are left in the deck, the two B's, and the two A's. You can see here how, remember, it was like five, 10. Now it's like 15.4. So that is exponentially increasing. And also, the point to get to this point, we got to accumulate our luck and our odds. We had the 95% chance, the 90% chance, and the 84% chance altogether up to this point, 72.42% chance to have been safe up until this point. You can see that's getting insane. That's already, that is too much to bear. It, just, just off of drawing this, this many cards alone, you could see how having a deck full of playsets already is too much. But I digress, we'll go into the last card here, right? Because we, we, we're just full of luck today, right? It's card D. Perfect. Card five of five. Remember, we got to draw that last good card. We got to put our luck to the maximum here. Again, we drew another card. So now there's 30 cards, two, four, six, eight of them. So 30 out of 38 are safe. Eight of them are deadly. We don't want to draw any A's, any B's, any C's, or any D's. And there's two of them still left in the deck. That means our dupe percentage is now at 21% just for this draw alone, which means the final uh, up to this point, by the way, we had a 57% chance to not draw a dupe, which is a, you know, a little bit more than a coin flip. Too deadly, in my opinion, uh, too deadly. Uh, and remember, this, this just rocketed exponentially. Now. I'm going to show you something here, too. Let's just say we were going second. So I'm just going to throw you a bonus card. Six of six math. If you just wanted to see it, 10 of these deadly, the dupe percentage. It, it's more likely than not. If we were going second with a card with the with that 42 card deck list, all of them being play sets, we actually had a more likely than not chance to draw a dupe. Only a 41 percent chance. 41.7 to be safe so even here going second we basically threw away our six card hand and made it a five card hand we threw everything away now i'm gonna go into a more realistic example here i'm showing you let's go into another universe now we're running just seven play sets seven play sets we're running so and, and the math's gonna be a lot easier too, by the way. I'm gonna make it very simple. I'm still gonna run the 42 card deck list. Why? Because it's gonna make things easy. Because seven play sets, 21 cards. It's gonna make the safe play sets also 21 cards. Make the math nice and easy for all of us to understand, right? So here's, we're running seven play sets now. And what's interesting is we're gonna have kind of a multiverse here, right? This is called permutations. I'm not going to go into permutations today because that's probably really deep stuff. I'm going to make it nice and simple, very like coin flippy stuff. So when we're talking about card two of five. If we did draw a card that was lettered A through G, right? Because we're only running seven play sets. It would actually repeat the same math, right? The same math that we did before is nice and repeatable. So we know that. But there's a chance that we went somehow deep in the multiverse where we drew a safe card and there was a 50 50 percent chance to be safe so technically these numbers could be cut in half to draw an accurate percentage and i'm just going to show you what i mean i'm going to jump all the way to card six of six like for for the other ones here where we drew all of these cards right in the seven place at maths because there's so many layers to permutations and multi multiverses, I'm saying, oh, look, we hit three of them and we hit two safe cards. Well, the math for that becomes exactly the same step as it was for the, the, the actually step three of the last one, giving us a 72% chance to be safe. So you could see by running seven play sets, we still have hitting only two times, which by the way, we could have very easily have hit three times. This number could have changed. A 72% chance to be safe, and it's way too much. And here's the thing. 
there are cards when we play this game that are going to alter the odds and the significance of it. I want to go into those cards right now and to show you why it's really hard to show math, this math on a graph, right? The first set of data points on cards I want to tell you are the cards that draw two or more cards, right? So think of cards like Triple Tactics Talent, Trade In, Allure of Darkness, all the pot cards that draw two, right? What they do is they're essentially making your maximum deck from a 40 card deck to like a 38 card deck or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Because they're drawing two. So they're decreasing the maximum size of your deck and thus changing your probabilities. When you have a lot of these draw cards running even more play sets, maybe now you should only run six play sets because you're, you thinned your deck out. When you're thinning your deck out, you're running more of a chance of dupes. I talked about it before and I want to mention it again because there's still going to be someone in the comments like you're forgetting hard once per turn cards, Jesse. They don't affect the thing. So I'm making sure I'm clearly and unequivocally mentioning hard once per turn cards will not affect your playset percentage cards like effect failure, infinite and permanence. You can use as many cards as you want on your turn. You don't mind seeing three infinite and permanence in your hand because they're not hard once per turn. So I want to mention it again in case I didn't mention it before, because there's still going to be someone in the comments guaranteed saying you forgot about hard once per turn cards. Anyways, here's something that meta decks have, which makes them meta decks, and I call them noob deck builder protection. They have something, all of these cards have one thing in common, and that's noob deck builder protection, which is why these cards are actually meta. They all let you discard a card, right? So if we're talking about all of these cards, Runic lets you draw a Runic card, and then that card you can discard a card to get Fountain. Hurley lets you discard a card. Diabellstar discard a card to get something. They all let you discard a card. And when you discard a card, it gives you that protection, right? So if you're, your five card hand turned into a four card hand because you drew a dupe, because you had so many play sets and you had bad deck building, well, these meta cards right here bail you out. They bail you out of the deck building. And that's why I've got to receive a comment that was like, well, how come Tenpai and Snake Eyes are still doing so good? And that's because they have innate bad deck building protection built in their deck they allow you to throw away a card to throw away one of the dupes that you got to continue the flow and finally also i do want to mention that there are cards that just replace themselves that aren't bad to get so like cards like wanted let you draw a card iperia draw a card upstart goblin draw a card so it just basically re replaces itself cards like upstart goblin again similar to uh, what i was talking about the draw two cards making your deck go from a 40 card deck to 39. But even the hard once per turn cards like Iperia and Wanted will replace themselves. So it, at the end of a five card hand, or even if you made it a four card hand, you draw and it, it, it replaces itself to still give you another card. So these are all cards that could be done to change the odds. And you can see here that that's why it's kind of deadly. If I just show you just, if I just blindly say, Oh, don't run play sets. I did want to go over these exceptions. But now what if you're not running a meta deck? What are some cards we can use to kind of put the odds in our favor, right? To kind of flip the odds on the meta deck. And I have some examples here, right? I talked about how discarding a card was noob protection. So we could run cards like Super Pomberization and Forbidden Droplet. Those cards are very good. They let you discard a card, right? So if you have more than one and those Forbidden Droplet and Super Pomberization are good, both going first and second. So it gives you that protection. If you are running a bunch of play sets, discard one of your duplicate cards and now you could do effects or negate effects, right? And then even Small World, like remember I was showing how in Diabelle Star, right? Was discarding a card. Theoretically, if you build your deck right and you have all these play sets, Small World now can, in theory, discard one of your duplicates and turn it into something more usable. So and that's if you know how to deck build properly with good small war usage. Also, we can use cards like Foolish Burial, Foolish Burial Goods, or One for One. Cards that, that are, you can only run one of that can pinpoint strike things in your deck that you need at that moment in time. These cards you can only run one of, so you can't run play sets anyways. And they specifically will target cards in your deck 
that can let you get effects going anyways. Now we're using our graveyard as an engine. Or again, in one for one case, we are, we're also discarding a card, some new protection in there, new deck building protection. Or, and I hate, it, don't, don't flame me in the comments. Oh my God, he's telling me to run floodgates. They're not, they're floodgates, yes, but they're also blowout cards. Cards like evenly matched, skill drain. There can only be one. If your deck can successfully use these cards, it's good to maybe sprinkle in one or two of these that that are differently that you can play. Because if you get a blowout card and you have a favorable matchup, especially in Master Duel where there's no best of three, right? These blowout cards you can easily put in a side check in the TCG. But these blowout cards will definitely be to your advantage. So with that said, I want to say we should to remind you, you should not run more than seven hard ones per turn play sets. The math on that, by the way, is about one out of every three games you play. If you're running seven play sets, more than seven play sets, you're going to draw a dupe. one in every three games. So don't run more than seven play sets. And that's if you're not running any of that bonus stuff, have none of that extra draw cards or whatever hubbubaloo right if you're running a lot of draw power maybe you shouldn't run five play sets the rule of thumb actually is i would say how many oreos can i eat before dinner right mm, i can eat about one two or three oreos before dinner but now if once i'm starting to get to more eating more than four oreos i might be spoiling my dinner and that's the same thing with play sets also even if you're running three play sets scrutinize every playset you still have a 3.64 percent chance to draw any even just one playset even one playset so scru scrutinize that heavily think to yourself do i mind if i draw two of these cards and i can only use one of them on a turn so just scrutinize every playset have fun deck building and with that in mind too because i love deck building i spend more time deck building than i do playing the game I think it's one of the most funnest processes. So have fun when you're trying to describe it. And also, oh, subscribe. If you're not subscribed and you like to see math and videos like this, please consider subscribing. Join our Discord. And also in our Discord, you can submit your replays. Replays is where I'll go over and I'll cast your stuff. I'm trying to do that every Thursday. I might have a cast for you guys. So that'll be some fun stuff. So this way I have a bit of fun content and mathematical content. We could deep dive into a lot of fun stuff. With that said, Thank you for watching. If you want to see the fun stuff, click over here. And if you want to see more mathematical content, click on the stuff over here. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. I hope this video made a lot more sense as to why we're not supposed to run all of these play sets. And as always, I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Have a great day.